Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel and welcome back to Racer or Random SCP Review. In this episode, um, we will again the same as usual do a random number, random number generator basically from minimum one to seven thousand because right now there is um, there are seven series of SCP uh, series one to seven or SCP one to SCP seven thousand right. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's just uh, roll the number, generate over here. I will look away and count to three, um, and you know, basically like wait, uh, not really wait, but uh, more like see where this lands. Hopefully, we don't actually get um, SCP 3000 again because we already did two of these, right? Uh, hopefully, we can get like a higher number of SCP or a smaller one and not the middle number, but yeah. Uh, we look away and one, two, and three. Okay, okay, five, eight, three, zero. Uh, we'll discuss about SCP five, eight, three, zero, and I will be right back. Okay, we are now here in the SCP wiki, um, in the SCP wiki page basically, and then here we are in uh, SCP five, eight, three, zero inside the SCP series six, because um, again there is uh, there are seven series. Of SCP, um, you know, uh, SCP one until a thousand is SCP series one, and then SCP series two will be SCP uh, one thousand and one until two thousand, and so on and so on, right? And you know, SCP five eight three zero is in the sixth, uh, is in the sixth series, so it's like a later or a newer uh, SCP, right? Um, you know, when we talk about SCP, we usually only um, either discuss about the three-digit number of SCP or, you know, like a thousand something, right? Not, you know, it's rare to actually discuss about SCP-2000 and so on and up, right? And here we are, we'll actually cover that as well using the random number generator as well like this. We land on SCP-5830 or Ahtohalan, okay? Um, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, you know, uh, with my accent, I will, uh, with our, uh, you know, the accent here in the South East Asia, it will be uh, pronounced as Atohalan, I think, uh, or Atuhalan, probably for English, but I don't know what this is, right? So yeah, I will just call it Atuhalan, probably, um, but yeah, okay, SCP-5830, let's check this out probably um okay still loading the page oh what is this oh this is this actually a new uh, format i actually don't know why do this one looks like this then okay containment class esoteric secondary class tomiel um, I think the, oh, oh, what is this? This looks so pretty. Oh, I don't know why the page now looks like this. The last time I checked it, it doesn't show like this, but it's fine. Um, okay, secondary class Tomiel, uh, containment class Esoteric. So, is that like safe or Euclid, uh, or... Uh, Kither, um, but apparently none of them, okay, uh, esoteric, okay, the symbol looks like this, it looks like origami, um, and then Tomiel looks like, um, uh, what is it called again, uh, um, the piece in the Chinese checker, I think, um, you know, like, uh, the lotus pieces, basically, right, uh, looks like that, and then there is this disruption class is Aki, uh, risk class caution. I actually don't know. Also, there is this colorful over here. Probably this is for the LGBT community, but I'm not sure about that. Um, okay, like I don't know if this is the default page of this SCP-5830 or the other page also looks like this, but I don't know. Also, the rating is only plus 25 over here. Therefore, um, you know, we making this video over here, like covering up uh, SCP like 5000, um, it can be like uh, publicity for this as well, right? Okay, so this one's level 4, secret. 
um, or ato halan, right? Or ato halan, okay? Uh, special containment procedures: the 15 km by 15 km region containing the entrance SCP-5830 is to be staffed by no fewer than 20 armed guards at all times, carrying 12 gauge shotgun stations across the area to monitor any and all attempted breaches while also maintaining sufficient distance from the entrance of SCP-5830 to not allude to its location. Admittance to the surrounding Northeast Greenland National Park is to be restricted to this end. Um, okay, so in this uh, information by itself, so this is like a um, uh, terrain SCP, right? Because it's like 15 kilometers by 15 kilometers, so um that's like that's actually very far away if you think about it um you know the distance between my uh house and my university is six you know 60 kilometers yeah um so that's like a quarter of that right and that still actually still sounds very far away um but yeah 15 by 15 um, that's like, um, if you ask me, that's like a 30 minutes ride, basically, using your motorbikes. Um, yeah, 30 minutes, actually, honestly, wow, that's actually very far away. And then on top of that, there is also this, uh, staffed, um, mo no fewer than 20 armed guards, right? Uh, so, uh, first of all, 20 is actually very few, like, very, very few, um, compared to how big this is, right? Because it's 15 by 15. Um, and then there's also over here as well, the Northeast Greenland National National Park uh, is to be restricted. So, you know, surrounding the area uh, probably is the Greenland National Park, right? And then it's also need to be restricted as well. So, you know, all in all, this can actually go up to like about I don't know, maybe 25 by 25 kilometers or even up to 50 by 50 kilometers, right? It's like a very wide area. So, you know, usually when it's contained this big, um, this is like basically like there is a very big SCP and then you just surround the area using fences, right? Um, make it uh, like a cage out of it, basically. And I think this is what happens over here. Oh, SCP-5830 is probably like an area. Okay, access to SCP-5830 is to be restricted to personnel with security clearance level 4 or higher. Um, and is to be mediated by no fewer than one armed guard and precisely two personnel cleared to navigate SCP-5830. Due to the temporal anomalies, anomalies present in SCP-5830, exploration attempts are to be limited to three days in length. Um, okay, uh, restricted to personnel with security clearance level 4 or higher, okay, so, um, like level 3, 2, 1, uh, you know, 0 or D class probably, um, you know, cannot enter this area, right, unless it's, like, specified or appointed to do so by the level 4 or higher probably, right, for research, uh, purpose probably, okay, interesting. The nearby research station of Danburg, Danburg is to be monitored for any attempts to explore northward toward SCP-5830. Um, okay, the nearby research station Danburg, okay. Uh, such attempts should be initially deterred and terminated if necessary. To this end, an anonymous, uh, an, an anonymous outpost is to be erected in or near Danburg. During the summer, similar procedures are to be enacted to deny access to the area surrounding SP-5830 via Zeckenberg Station. Okay, so there's like uh, multiple spots over there, right? Uh, like outposts and then like uh, stations and stuff like that probably. Any person which successfully enter SP-5830 must be tracked and either detained, terminated or verified dead by local personnel. Okay, wildlife is to be also kept from entering SCP-5830. Okay, so this is like very serious. Um, okay, any objects or person which attempt to exit SCP-5830 are to be immediately detained if not authorized. Uh, okay, uh, okay, you're going in will be um, you know terminated. You try to go out, 
as well you will be terminated as well uh, or terminated so they present immediate immediate and effective hazard to site personnel or civilians all objects found within SCP-5830 are to be recorded for foundation review okay so this is like an area probably oh, okay so over here description SCP-5830 is a large glacial cave okay so it's a cave that's why we saw a beautiful picture right located at 7 uh, something degree something north and then to something degree something west right along the eastern coast of greenland okay um greenland it is uh it's the icy uh island right or a region right its entrance is located beneath approximately 62 meters of ice along a narrow inlet of the arctic arctic ocean okay being roughly semicircular with a diameter of 19 meters okay so 19 meters that's actually wide for an entrance of a cave okay um melt water from the glacier regularly runs through scp5 at zero though attempts to trace the water's flow via dissolved okay my internet has just uh disconnected but it's fine um what is it again melt water from the glacier regularly runs through scp5 at zero so attempts to trace the water flow via dissolved dice and bullion tracking devices have been unable to determine any point of ex exit okay um so basically like water going through this um you know cannot be determined at the point of exit right uh where it goes basically the ent the entirety of scp5830 also seems immune to coughing and changes only minimally in size and relatively integrity 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 uh, oh integrity okay okay with seasonal periods of melting and freezing okay so um there is no calving i don't know what calving is it's probably like um the formation of calcium probably like a pillar or something like that and then changes only minimally okay like melting and freezing uh because of season right okay uh, like maybe summer and then f uh winter and stuff like that probably right when entered, SCP-5830 continues to resemble a glacial cave with an upper dome-like wall composed entirely of ice containing fragments of dust and rock and floor made a brown-black mixture of gravel and silt. The temperature within SCP-5830 consistently measures minus 2 degrees Celsius with little variation due to external temperature or depth within the cave. The initial cavern called Depth Zero for navigational purposes of SCP-5830 extends downward beneath the glacier, arriving at a depth of 17 meters before branching into two tunnels which diverge at an angle of 120 degrees. Okay, so it's a cold, uh, it's very cold and then it's very deep apparently. Okay, a depth of 17 meters before branching into two tunnels, right? Diverge at angle of 120, okay. Um, oh, this one is actually very great. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Entrance to an initial branch of SCP-5830. Uh, okay, so there will be... Oh, okay, so this is the entrance, right? Over here and then over here. Um, okay. Its branch strongly resembles the initial cavern in size and shape making navigation of SCP-5830 rather challenging. See document SCP-5830-A for navigation procedures. Proceeding down either of the two branches will lead to another branch point. Uh, okay, so it's like there's branches inside branches, right? Which again splits into two tunnels of identical size and shape. Each branch then leads to another two branches, which lead to another two, and so on. Exploration attempts have confirmed the existence of all depth 9 branches, with the furthest exploration of any single path arriving at a point at depth 57. Okay. Despite this nomenclature, however, branches of equal depth may not be located at the same distance below sea level, 
with some paths actually rising above the initial cavern in altitude. Okay, so the cave also goes upwards, not only downwards, okay? The total area spent by SCP-5830 is at least 24,000 square kilometers. And the maximum recorded depth is, okay, uh, 4 digit meters below sea level. Um, that's actually very deep, if you ask me. Uh, well, I mean, um, is it? Well, it's only a few kilometers below sea level. Well, it's not that deep. Um, but, okay. Um... Okay, so apparently this is like very long SCP to be discussed, therefore, uh, okay, like this one, page 37, 38, oh my god, this is actually very long SCP. Okay, wow. Wow. Okay, footnote, second perk stations only occupied during the summer, oh my god. Last edited 23rd July 2020, okay, so that's 746 days ago at this time I'm recording this, okay, so I will probably divide this into few episodes because I cannot, I just can't, I, this is too much for me, okay, which makes sense and makes it interesting as well because, you know, this SCP is very big, very large, um, and 15 by 15 kilometers is apparently only, you know, to cover the entrance, right? Because this cavern, you know, goes beneath, you know, like, uh, this one, the depth can be like four digit meters below sea level, right? Um, like maybe let's just, uh, imagine like 1000 meters below sea level probably, right? Um, at the, you know, at the very least amount, which is already deep enough. That okay, interesting. Um, okay, so yeah, I will make this into a few episodes probably. Um, uh, with like about 30 minutes episode each, probably there exist at least 17 paths within SCP 5830, which amazingly terminate. Okay, these termination points are designated SCP 5831 and appear as large circular caverns measuring 10 and 20 meters in diameter, okay? Um, no further tunnels or crevices extend from these caverns, and meltwater which would accumulate at these points appears to completely seep into the gravel and sealed floor, unable to be traced, okay? So yeah, they just, um, you know, like, uh, basically disappear into the... Uh, you know, maybe like the floor, like the cavern floor, probably. Um, it also appears time does not pass within the confines of SCP-5830-1. Okay, so this one is basically um, at least 17 paths, right? Uh, you know, this path is only a circular cavern, right? So um, it's like, you know, you enter this, there is uh, two branches, right? Left and right. But, you know, when you go left, you will, uh, like, uh, go around this, right? And then, you know, you will, uh, came out from the other branch, right? So this is like a circular. And there's at least 17 of them. And then this one, therefore, designated as SCP-5830-1. Which is amazing, to be honest, if you ask me. Um, okay um time does not pass within the confines of scp 5830 one okay okay so it also appears time does not pass within the confines of scp 5830-1 at least not in the usual sense instruments which rely on mechanical or natural means to determine the passing of time and still uh oh the passing of time stand still and attempts at radio communication to external sources fail Personnel who enter SCP-5830-1, however, are able to keep time by counting aloud, tapping, or other similar means. Okay, so manual uh, track of time, basically, right? Among the known instances of SCP-5830-1, seven are entirely empty and okay, seven are entirely empty and devoid of any further anomaly or artifact. The ten remaining termination points, however, contained instances of SCP-5830-2, 
replicas of other known SCP objects completely frozen in time and space. Uh, oh, okay, interesting. So, in each of these, uh, 5830-1, there are many other SCP objects. Uh, this one we really called it SCP objects. So it can be uh, anything, right? Maybe SCP-173, um, SCP-914, SCP-682 probably even. Uh, completely frozen in time and space, right? Maybe like in the walls, right? Uh, probably. Um, okay, interesting. And then therefore all of these is con is called... SCP-5830-2 from now on, right? Uh, although it, they are basically have their own SCP name or number, but since this is all frozen in time and space, therefore it's just uh, then all, you know, designated as SCP-5830-2, okay? Its in instance of SCP-5830-2 is visually indistinguishable from the anomaly which they emulate, okay? Composition, texture, radiation signatures, and even odor are furthermore identical. Okay, interesting. So it's like an exact re replica. Okay, attempts to interact with or stimulate response from instances of SCP-5830-2 yield no results. Okay, interesting. And specific experimentation for each instance is detailed below. Uh, each instance, instances of SCP-5830-2 cannot be removed from the SCP-5830-1 cavern, which contains it and indeed cannot be moved or relocated within the cavern by any means. Um, okay, interesting. This is actually very interesting. Um, why? Well, because we then know other SCPs as well, right? Um, and interesting part is that they are... Um, you know, like, uh, visually indistinguishable. So, basically, they look exactly almost the same, right? Exactly the same, or even, um, you know, by uh, the composition, texture, radiation, uh, signatures again, and even odor, right? Uh, like, the smell of it, um, you know, is very identical. But the thing is that they are all inactive or passive basically and they have no result whatsoever to uh, whoever is interacting or uh, stimulate it so yeah again uh, so this is like a replica of you know a dead a dead replica of scp basically okay interesting again um okay so there is a lot of these right scp all of these you know uh Okay, this is a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not even sure if we can actually finish this in one episode, to be honest. Uh, okay, so this is... Okay, so this is the um, branches, right? Uh, because of the 17-1, uh, right? Uh, all the dash ones have been recorded... Because there's like at least few, uh, at least 17, right? Over here. Um, where is it explained again? Uh, okay, okay, I think after this one, right? Uh, 30-1, yeah, over here. At least 17 paths, right? Okay, so this is all the paths that been, uh, um, you know, like, uh, has been recorded, right? Okay, so we'll actually read all of these, um, maybe. Um... Okay, dash one, dash one. The first uh, path, right? Navigation LLL uh, something, 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 something. Depth eight, okay, contains empty. Okay, this one's empty, right? Uh, like, I think 12 of those, right? Um, uh, oh, no, seven. Seven are empty, and the other 10 has uh, all the SCP, right? Okay, so 10 of these has the SCP, and the other seven is empty. And then this is the first one, is empty, okay. Many personnel who have studied SCP-5830 suspect that more instances of uh, Dash 1 and Dash 2 can be found within the caverns. And some have conjectured that all known and unknown anomalous object possesses and emulations within SCP-5830. Though current investigations provide little support for this hypothesis, and if it were true, such objects would necessarily be located at extremely great depths, okay? 
um okay because again like the deepest depths uh that we you know that they currently uh discover is not the end right because it still can continue downward right um uh, okay at this time the complete inertness of instances of scp5 a302 cannot be fully verified ongoing experiments have inferred amounts of anomalous activity prior to discovery to scp 5830 in the majority of instances okay so this one is only displaying this one i think uh let's go to one test two yeah okay so this one uh the test two contains um okay llrl and then something uh depth 10 contains polar pair for tufts traces of seal blood okay so this is like the the animals from uh, probably the native animals right because polar pair and then seal as well right um for tufts is probably when they um when they are shedding probably and then traces of seal blood um it's probably you know the polar pair uh eats the seal probably right uh, okay interesting um whoever discovered this probably felt very uh, scared because they notice that there's animal traces, right? There might be actually uh, animals over there that can actually uh, become harmful for them, right? Uh, and they must be very scary. If you ask me when they found this one, okay. Okay, test three over here. Um, okay, let's try. Okay, test three. Test 10, okay. Uh, contains SCP-5830-2-1. Corpse of Daniel Morehouse, Corpse of Kupik Inaliktuk, Human Feces, okay. Emulated SCP, SCP-073, uh, description, 73 is shown sitting on the floor in grief, knees raised with its head and its hands. The mechanical augmentations to its arms, legs, spinal cord, and shoulder blades known to exist on SCP-73 do not appear. And are instead replaced by flesh and skin identical to the remainder of its body. The decay inducing effects of SCP 73 are also present in test 2 test 1 with identical capacity and radius. Um, I don't remember what SCP 73 is, but I think it's either Abel or Cain, right? Um, it's like one of the other person, probably. Um, I don't actually remember again um why i noticed that it's him uh because um i don't know like i feel like this is him right this is either abel or kane maybe i'm wrong but yeah correct me if i'm wrong because i you know it's been a while since i actually learned about scp and you know scp 73 is probably you know like one of the earliest scp right okay um and then therefore, you know, this one as well, the decay inducing effects, because, you know, uh, either Abel or Cain, I think, has like the property of making land become barren. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is also what this means, but okay, maybe I'm wrong, completely wrong, but whatever, right? Okay, so this is the first SCP that is found, which is inside um, SCP-1-3, basically, right? Okay, and then this one is test two, the first one, right? Uh, test two, test one, basically. Okay, uh, test one, test four is empty. Okay, and then test five. Okay, test five. Okay, there's something over here. Test nine, uh, contains test two, test two, right? Uh, test two is SCP, and then test two is the number, you know, number two, uh, from the sequence they found, right? Emulated SCP-4964, single human clavicle, okay. Um, SCP-4964 appears identical to its usual state in containment, notably suspended in mid-air approximately 1 meter off the ground. Due to the inability to remove SCP-2-2 from test 5, uh, test 1, test 5, or the cave, uh, or even open the container and remove the DVD, okay. Test to determine the exhibition of identically anomalous properties to SCP-4964 cannot be conducted. Um, okay, so again, it's frozen in time and space, therefore you cannot move it. 
and you know to determine if it's identical or not you need to actually do something to it right um because it's frozen therefore you cannot uh do the research therefore you cannot actually determine if it's the same you know it if it has the same uh identical anomalous or not right okay that's the second one interesting and then this one is the third one empty okay uh Oh no, it's still, the, yeah, this one's the third one, at dash 1, dash 7, uh, identified as dash 2, dash 3, uh, the third SCP, right? SCP-1341, traces of silty loam, organic material of unknown origin, okay? D description, 1341 appears identical to its usual state in containment, attempts to remove the lid of SCP-5830-2-3, have been unsuccessful again this is the same as the uh, previous one because they are all frozen in time and space therefore um you know you cannot physically remove the lid from it right okay um yeah interesting i also don't know what 1341 as well okay let's go to the cave number eight cave for number eight okay uh this one's the eighth cave there is something over here okay scp uh test two test four Emulated SCP-1974, traces of bar soap, okay? 1974 appears identical to its usual state in containment. The water contained in Dash 2 Dash 4 does not freeze, and when drained, behaves identically to 1974. Communication with uh, 1974 Dash 1, nor 1974 Dash 2, nor emulations thereof is unsuccessful. Personnel who have entered Test 2 Test 4 instead hear an incessant droning sound akin to an American nuclear warning siren. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, so this one is SCP-1974, right? Okay, traces of bar soap. Um, okay, so there is like water over there, right? The water is not freezing. Um, you can actually drain the water, okay? And... It behaves identically, okay? I don't know what 1974 is. Um, and then communication within test 1, test 2. So, test 1, test 2 is probably like the native uh, something out of SCP-1974, right? Um, you try to communicate, but it's unsuccessful, okay? Um, yeah, interesting. You can still drain the water, okay? Uh, okay, you... You know, people entering this also can hear, like, basically a nuclear warning siren, right? Uh, which is, again, very, um, very, very scary uh, moment, right? You just hear, like, a nuclear warning sign, which is, again, it's always bad if you hear about this, right? Okay, so we already, like, spent 30 minutes on this one. Uh, we might actually have to continue this in the next episode, but, yeah... Um, this is a lot of stuff to take as well. And then this one as well. There's pages as well, right? Until 41. Yeah, all of this. Um, uh, I don't even know if we can even finish this in, you know, five episodes. I, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, this is just insane. Oh my god. But yeah, uh, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. We will continue uh, from this one, the test, uh, test, test one, test nine, in the next episode. But yeah, until then, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Well, not really tomorrow. Um, you know, in the next episode of Razor Random SCP Review. But this one will be SCP five eight three zero part two, because this is only the part one. But yeah, uh, again, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you again very, very soon. And see ya.